So guys, um, it's day three in Kolkata and I haven't really had a chance to sit and chat or vlog. But we're currently on our way to the Hope Foundation um, main office where they have all their, you know, uh, projects, well some of the projects anyway. And this morning I'm pretty sure I woke up with food poisoning. So I just went to the pharmacy and it's amazing in this country. <laughs> You can get a lot of medications over the counter and so cheap. I was like blown away. I was like, I'm going to stockpile some things and take it back because each prescription in the UK is so expensive and I don't ever see my GP. So, you know, anyway, I mainly just needed things for um, food poisoning, um, antispasmodic, anti sickness, and something to protect my stomach. My stomach still feels a bit churny, to be honest. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of days. To be honest, um, yesterday we went shopping um, and we went to see family. Day before, the day we landed, I kid you not, it was the strangest 24 hours. We landed and literally, um, it was 2 a.m. By the time we got out, it was 3. My hotel booking didn't work out. So um, we were literally um, on a taxi trying to find this hotel, which was closed because obviously I had booked it from the UK and the agency or whatever medium she booked it through, they said something different and the customer service here was something different and it was very unhelpful. Even though it was middle of the night, they were very unhelpful. If you guys want to know, it's Oyo and I would not recommend it at all. So yeah, so we were stranded and this is 3 a.m. at night and near the airport this taxi driver is like oh i know a hotel we'll just take you there and this hotel was like god awful horrible and um, it was horrendous let's just say and we literally got there and me and mum are literally arguing as to whose fault it is and i was crying I was so upset and anyway um we just it was like 4 a.m so like obviously no we just didn't have any option so we just stayed there and we just kind of like tried to book an Airbnb or something uh, and yeah so that we did that and then we literally um, went and um, did some small bits and bobs like getting phone sim sorted out taking money out take cash out activate our bank cards do some little bits and bobs and eat something and then we literally checked out as soon as literally thankfully the place that we're currently staying at it's um again i just didn't trust anything online because it was just so it's just so difficult to gauge a lot of them even airbnb some places are really dodgy and i was like i saw one of the airbnb hosts was actually someone i knew from years ago and i'm like I come to trust this person a bit so i was like okay i think i can trust this person and i know that at least if we go to this airbnb it's going to be semi-legit you know because at least you know them so yeah we booked the place thankfully got a response very quickly and we may we were able to like move straight in so yeah that's what we're saying right now we're only staying there for the next couple of days really and then we have to kind of move on because we've got other things to do so yeah and today we're going to the whole foundation so i'm julius uh, i look into the mainly the international volunteer program and uh, as well as i'm also looking in the Partially, like some of the social media content specialists, mm. content development. Lovely. Yeah, that's my key role. And also, like, look after a little bit of HR function. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ravanika, and I work <coughs> as program in the education. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the education that we look at uh, uh, focuses on the age group between 2 to 14 years, which I primarily mm. focus on. So, we work with uh, children in Kresh. We have four Kresh uh, centers in Kolkata, and one will be visiting our doctor today, uh, okay. which is near the dumping ground. Uh, so, uh, so, these are uh, children of two to four, uh, five years, mm. and after these, uh, the children are then enrolled in formal schools. And uh, presently, we are working with uh, 45 government schools in Kolkata and Hawara. Mm. And uh, any schools we focus It's a sponsorship program mm. where we have more than 1,800 children under the sponsorship <laughs> program. And basically, we are projects and then health livelihood, and also looking after uh, different partners which are associated with the foundation mm. and uh, outreach projects. Mm. Okay. I am Pushpa. Um, and my role is to just uh, looking 
after uh, launching uh, a paid program, which mm -hmm. is under the protection team, mm -hmm. child protection team. So I'm looking after 10 uh, residential child care centers mm -hmm. where the children really need a care and protection are being placed and they have been supported for their holistic development and growth. Mm -hmm. And also we have support kids, uh, kids have been supporting my mother and child care unit that mm -hmm. the two mothers who have <coughs> that strong yeah. education, uh, livelihood, health, protection. So mostly quantitative data. <laughs> My name is Ramon Abasha, I'm the finance monitoring officer of the foundation and I have been working in 12 year class. I am in Global Social Business Partners Finance, uh, finance Activities, Finance Reports. Okay. I am Pavuk Sharkar, I am with the grant writing team mm. of the foundation. So my uh, basic uh, role is to find out different avenues of uh, funding, looking mm. for funding partners mm. and then approaching them. and. Uh, trying to represent in a written way how a foundation works mm -hmm. and what are our needs. So that's my basic job. In addition to that, I uh, coordinate with all the program leads here to and understand. My immediate job was to visit our foundation here, but obviously COVID happened, so I couldn't. So I'm really glad that, you know, I've been able to actually make it here. Thank you for, you know, making that happen. That's it. The Hope Foundation are actually a charity that was established in the 90s in Kolkata. They work with the street populations and I first came into contact with them during my reign as Miss England. But I was very fortunate to actually help raise funds towards this charity, towards this particular community. And yeah, to be able to finally visit them in person and some of their projects was just amazing. I will leave the details of this charity and how you can support them in the description below. Our first stop was this school near Bhagar Dumping Ground. This is actually the biggest dumping ground in Calcutta, where a lot of the parents of these children actually are rag pickers and litter pickers. And prior to this school opening up, they were taking their children with them to work, essentially in these um, really toxic areas near the dumping ground. And actually making their kids do some of the rag picking with them or just leaving them to play in that area. And obviously the dumping ground is so toxic, it can have needles and disease and all sorts of things. So this is a really nice facility to engage the children, not just with education, but also allowing the parents to continue their work and to basically stop the children from having to get into the same cycle. Sadly on this day, I was really not feeling well. I was so nauseous this whole time, feeling dizzy. I hadn't eaten anything all day and I had vomited earlier in the day as well. I had a tummy ache as well. And I was taking every opportunity to just step aside and try not to throw up basically. This is another crash. Again, you can see the mothers here. This allows these children to have a healthy meal and again, allows the parents to go and engage with their work activities and allows the children an educational opportunity. And these are the mothers who came to say hello to us. Someone mentioned in the video I posted before that the camera moves so much. I do apologize guys, that's my mother's amazing camera work. She likes to really, really spin it around. Now this area that we went to is quite a secluded area away from the main city and the community and the children here, a lot of them with special needs, have no access to, for instance, physiotherapists, speech and language therapists and this is a special school to allow children with special needs essentially to thrive and give them an opportunity in life as well and this is one of the only such sort of uh, facilities in this whole area with such allied health professionals who can really engage these special children and help them to develop and grow as well and this is an artwork that they created for us together with the staff working here Yes, all isn't it? Very good. Next stop was the secondary school, which is an opportunity for some of these children to actually pursue higher education, even to the extent of university. 
This is part of the HOPE sponsorship program. Some of these children have actually gone on to study abroad as well. Soon after this point, I kid you not, I had to step out and get some fresh air and sit down because I was at the peak of feeling unwell and nauseous. Tara well educated teacher amna. So Tara ki pare saara din thore hote shakal saara agar utar theke diye shakal bikel pas saare pas kabdi. At a routine hase. She routine hisse be saara din era divided per hour. After this, we were crossing the Howrah Bridge to get to the other part of the city to go to the Hope Hospital. The Hope Hospital was an absolutely fantastic facility. It has its own endoscopy suite, own radiography suites. It's got so many really high quality facilities, including this eye clinic, colonoscopy, all sorts of things, all sorts of condensed into a small hospital with about 40 beds. And actually this hospital became a COVID hospital during the COVID crisis. After visiting the Hope Hospital, I was feeling a lot better and we had a little shopping break at Korea Heart Market. And then we went to the ambulance outreach program. This is actually held later on at night around 8 p.m. when all the daily wage earners have returned from work and can access the healthcare service. So, hey, This ambulance outreach program is much like a primary care GP sort of service and it's built to take healthcare to these communities which live in remote locations and this particular community is actually living under a bridge and as you can tell from the way they're living it's pretty shabby and not very hygienic. Unfortunately, a lot of these people sleep, eat, cook and go to the toilet in the same area. And also, these daily wage earners sometimes avoid going to hospitals and government healthcare facilities because that involves queuing up for the whole day and missing out on a whole day off work. So they'd rather not go. So this outreach program allows for medical concerns to be addressed early before they become really serious or severe. Something we did as soon as I got there was walking around getting to know the actual location and the people and also triaging some of the people there to check if they needed the healthcare services and directing them to the ambulance. <laughs> then came the next bit which was my favorite bit where i actually got involved personally with the ambulance crew with the doctor and the nurse to diagnose these patients write prescriptions examine them you had to do them in this really bizarre setting which i've never done it before but it was so rewarding i really enjoyed this bit where I actually felt useful and felt like my skills as a doctor were being best utilized. So that's the end of part two guys, make sure you stay tuned for part three where I go into my very first Indian Bengali wedding after literally years my cousin's wedding. Make sure you like, comment, share and press the bell icon and of course subscribe to my channel if you like this video and don't forget to follow me on all my socials. See you next time, bye bye. Mwah.